Hey Bronze Brigade, we're back talking about Hotshot Comics again. Now several of you have asked for an update video where I discuss some of the stuff that's happened since my last update video I made, so I'm going to go over some of those details in this video, some of the new developments in what's been happening around this story. Now inevitably the first question I'm going to get is, what are you even talking about? I'm not familiar with this situation. So you have a comic book shop, which is Hotshot Comics, aka Asheville Comics in North Carolina, also known as Asheville Card Shop now, formerly known as Haywood Comics. They've gone by several different names. Their owner, Doug Siegelis, has been accused of essentially taking 9-8 pre-orders for comic books for CGC and then never delivering those comics, and we're getting close to two years later on some of those orders. In addition to that, many people also dropped off comic books at their physical location in North Carolina, and those comic books haven't been delivered after they were supposed to be graded and or pressed in many cases, and the, the owners still don't have their books or their money back. So naturally, a lot of these customers took to things like social media, they took to CGC, a lot of different places, and even the court system now, as we've seen. So I want to start off talking about the biggest update, in my opinion, to the overall story here, which is CGC's involvement. Now, shortly after I made my videos, you did see comments from social media from Hotshot Comics basically saying these concerns are overblown. We are working to get comic books delivered to the customers you know, have patience, things like that. Now, at the same time, CGC was very consistent in their messaging to customers through email and through the CGC forums that they were being dealt with and that they would have their comic books delivered to them, not to Hotshot Comics. There are several messages, messages saying things like, do not worry, we're sending your comic books to you. We are not sending them to this individual. Well, Hotshot made a post and then slowly we started to see CGC's messaging change and that all happened on 713. So CGC Mike, who is kind of the CGC employee liaison on the CGC forums, actually uh, edited his post. He locked the thread about Hotshot Comics and he made a post saying that they are working with Hotshot Comics to get these books back to the customers. Hotshot Comics took to Instagram to basically post a email from Stuart Lurie, who is CGC's general counsel in this matter. And it, it confirmed that there's a set of two spreadsheets according to the email that we see in the picture. And that one of those sets is the books that are at CGC's location from Hotshot. And the other one is the records from the claim forms that people had been submitting with CGC when they said, hey, if you're affected by this, send us your claim forms. Now, CGC's stance hasn't changed on the fact that Hotshot Comics CGC account has been terminated and that Doug Sigilis is no longer allowed to have a account with CGC. However, they are working on apparently fulfilling the old uh, debts that were owed to them. And then, well, we don't really know what's happening to those books. Hotshot says that they're getting them back. CGC seems to be a little murky on this. So with those claim forms, that's how they were asking customers to reach out to them to let them know that they had books that were affected from all of this. And so here's the issue. I've run into a bunch of people that have hit me up because I've kind of been publicly talking about this for a while and say, hey, we don't have the claim forms from CGC. I haven't gotten a response to my email. So I have been trying to get in touch with CGC. I've been talking to people in the community who I know are familiar with CGC. Several have been essentially unhelpful. They're not going to help further this along. One person has actively been trying to get in contact with Matt Nelson, the CEO of CGC, to get some kind of comment or a contact for these people so that we can get that stuff forwarded along. But honestly, it's been a while and there's been no real progress made from, from my end. So. I'm at this point where I would reach out if anybody from CGC is watching, we would love to hear some kind of comment on this. And I would love to have you on to discuss the, the ins and outs of this if you're willing and able to do so. But the real reason I'd love to get in touch with you is because there are these customers that are like, hey, I, I have a legit claim in this, in this situation. How do I get it to CGC if they won't respond to my original email? So if anybody from CGC is watching, I implore you, please reach out to me or leave a comment so we can figure out how to get a hold of you other than the basic customer support email, which has been ineffective for several of your customers. Additionally, it would be extremely nice to know why stances have changed on this. I can only speculate as to the real nature of what's going on here. There is sort of a debate going on whenever I talk about this in the comments about whether or not CGC is legally obligated to send the comic books back to Doug or not. And that's a really good question that I'm not qualified to answer. Different states, different laws, all these kinds of different things. I'm not a lawyer, so I really don't know the real answer to that and how it would work out. There could be something in CGC's terms and conditions. There could be something about, you know, since he had to go to collections, 
Maybe that voids some of his right to some of these books. You know, I've even theorized it's possible that maybe CGC is just trying to get as much money out of Doug as, poss as, as possible before he realizes he's not getting any books. And then they'll send the books back to the customers that filled out the claim forms. I mean, that's possible. I really don't know what's going to happen here. And, and at this point, I have to kind of wildly speculate because CGC has been silent. Now, look, the reason they could be being silent is because they have to be. Uh, there could be some sort of legal reason for this for, for this to be happening the way it is right now. Maybe that's possible too. I acknowledge that. But it would be nice to know if these customers are going to be made whole. And if CGC decides they have to send the books back to Doug for some reason, it's really iffy. I mean, I'd hate to say that, you know, we know those books aren't going to the customers, but it doesn't seem very likely, does it? Now, fast forward to the next update in the story. And on 715, Asheville Cards, which is the Asheville Card Shop, which is kind of how they're basically rebranding themselves at this point, uh, even though they've, they've kind of dabbled in cards for decades, going back to early eBay scams that I found out about from one of his ex-girlfriends uh, in the early 2000s, allegedly. But yeah, so essentially this is where it's going. They're going towards like things like baseball cards or sports cards, I should say, and Funko Pops, action figures, stuff like that. They've mentioned grading and talking about all these kinds of things that landed them in hot water with CGC in the first place. But what they talked about on this date was an investor program that apparently goes back at least to 2022. And essentially they're saying it almost sounds like a mystery box to me, like you invest by paying at least $50, although they say one investor in 2022 did a $10,000 investment. And then depending on what you put in, you get certain rewards back in the form of sports cards, whether it be like refractors or autograph cards or, or whatever it might be. So apparently, you know, people are investing in this person. Uh, and I wonder what's happening there and if any of those people have actually gotten their rewards recently, because it's a very interesting new angle for him to take here with this this strategy. I mean, to me, that sounds like a mystery box where you've been essentially buy an amount and then you're getting something out of it and, and he's not saying exactly what you're going to get. So that's a mystery box, right? But it's weird to call it an investor strategy, but that's what he refers to it as. So then on 719, he does something extremely different than what we've been seeing. He actually shipped out a customer some of their product. So there was some kind of weird thing happened that happened here with this, where he basically uh, a shipment notification got given to a customer and they were like, oh, that's that's really interesting, a shipment from Hotshot Comics. That person had ordered three issues of Immortal Hulk, 47, 48, and 49, if I'm not mistaken. And then so that email didn't go anywhere and he ended up checking an eBay account he was familiar with that Hotshot Comics is running kind of an alternate eBay account. And he noticed that slab was up on eBay. He emails Doug about this and he ends up getting an extremely sarcastic and snarky reply. But he, this customer actually does end up getting the slab. Now, this book was almost two years old at this point. It had been graded on 5-29-22 when the customer looked up the label. So it's still an older graded book. It's, it's impossible to say if this is one that he received recently, although that seems very unlikely, or one that he's had in his possession ever since that happened, or potentially another one he came across and decided to use to fulfill this order, I guess. But it was broken and, you know, the customer complained about that in the email too. And it, it's really just kind of classic uh, Doug from what we're seeing as replies. There's very much like this talking down to the customer approach that is is extreme, to be honest. And that's, that's kind of the interaction that he had with this person. But they did get one of their slaps. Now, it's worth noting that wasn't the person's complete order. He'd previously received one shipment. There's this shipment and he's still waiting on one of the books but very odd that he did fulfill this order. Fast forward about a week later on 725 and Doug does another interesting thing. He actually emails several customers and he's asking for their help in writing to CGC to make sure that they get their books released to Doug. He's saying that CGC is not honoring the original agreement where he was supposed to pay a quarter down of the entire amount he owed them for all the books that he'd had graded and that they were supposed to start sending him shipments of comic books. And he calls this questionable business tactics by CGC in these emails. But he's going around trying to get people to email CGC on his behalf to further something. So obviously things aren't going according to plan for Doug at this point. Otherwise, why would he be reaching out to these customers? So it's over this course of those emails and a week later that he says he's paid 25% of the total amount that he owes CGC. And we know from something I'll talk about a little later on that that's $50,000. And that is basically going to be for, you know, again, for a quarter of the comic books, which he says is 600 comic books. So that means you're talking about 2,400 comic books at CGC from Hotshot Comics customers and that they submitted on their behalf. A few days later, uh, you know, we've had kind of a, a delay 
stay in a trial that was supposed to happen or a court proceeding that was supposed to happen between a plaintiff, Brad, who I had on my show, and you can go see that interview if you like, where we talk about the situation in detail. Originally, the sheriff couldn't serve Doug. They couldn't get a hold of him or find him because they had his home address and not his business address. And apparently he's been living out of the store, according to several people. And so he goes to court on the second court date that was that was arranged after the sheriff is able to serve him at the comic book store. So this case is basically over a list of about 10 comic books that Brad had dropped off. Some of those were gonna be pressed and they were gonna be submitted to CGC and returned to him. And he valued the the probable outcome of what he thought he was gonna get grade-wise for these books if they were graded at about $10,000. We're talking about keys like ASM 129, the first appearance of the Punisher and things like that, right? So major key books. And Doug makes you know several comments. He, he reiterates that he owes $50,000 to CGC. He talks about people bad-mouthing him online, which the judge does not care about at all. And the only evidence he brought in his favor were some emails, which Brad also brought, in addition to a whole bunch of interactions, evidence that he's gathered about what Doug is doing at Hotshot Comics, a really impressive book. And he gives that book to the judge, the judge reviews it, and then you find out a few days later that the judge awards Brad the winner of that case, and Doug is now on the hook to pay him. However, since then, he did appeal that decision, so we're going to be going down the appeals route, and we'll see how that turns out when there's a follow-up date at court. Then, on August 6th, court has uh, called Doug's name once again because he's supposed to appear for, or at least be uh, uh, starting on the process of dealing with a larceny charge. So what happened here is you had a woman at a grocery store who had just pulled some money out of the grocery store's ATM machine. So what she alleges happened here is that she had the, the money in her purse, and that Doug ended up with the money, took it out of her cart, and also some cards too may have been involved in that. We're not 100% sure on the details of that as far as I know. And so, yeah, so the crazy part of this story, other than just the fact that if it's true, that would just be straight up theft uh, from an individual, is also that she was on her way to go pay for a funeral for a cousin. So she was kind of like, you know, doing some stuff on the, on the lead up to that process. And so that's that's especially heartbreaking for that person and that family. On top of that, so she she waited around to talk to the police, which she initially didn't want to do because she thought this was a homeless guy that took her money. And she thought, well, nothing's going to come of this is, is kind of the impression I get. Turn to come to find out the police are aware of who this person is. And they say, no, he's a local business owner because the police in the area are definitely familiar with him. And so she decided to press charges. So now we have a larceny case moving forward with Doug in regards to that, that theft of that woman's money, completely unrelated to comic books. So one other thing I wanna share is I was contacted by another shop that's in the area that said, hey, you know, we've been watching your content. Something you should know, we have an employee who had an interaction with Doug that was pretty terrible. Would you like to be put in touch with her? And I said, sure, yeah, let's talk. And I made sure I had permission from this person to share all these details. Essentially, a few years ago, she worked for Doug, and what she was doing is she was listing comic books and other items on eBay, packing those up and fulfilling those. And she, what she wanted to do was work in the comic book shop, but she kind of got this gig doing this part-time. And then one day a week, she would work in the comic store because that's what she really wanted to do. On those days, she was alone with Doug in the store. And after, you know, some there was some flirting that she, as she called it, and she didn't think too much of it at first. She thought it was kind of, you know, just, just sort of, innocent i think at first is kind of the impression i got but it eventually developed into inappropriate text messages that started being you know delivered at all hours of the night according to her he would say that he'd been drinking but she's not sure if that's just what he's saying to like is he felt embarrassed or something but he was sending these text messages he also was inappropriately touching her he was patting her on her rear end according to her so that is you know obviously clear-cut sexual harassment if that's true and so that is something that uh, eventually led to her having to say i'm not comfortable with this you need to stop at that point he stopped doing it but he also started treating her very different differently he started being more strict with her making up new rules that weren't rules before and also uh, basically accusing her of uh, not being a good employee or a good person because he was also uh, disparaging her work ethic. And then eventually he fired her without reason given. And I mention this because, you know, this is an employee that worked at the comic book store. I've talked to several ex-employees. I've also spoken to several women that have been involved with Doug as far as whether that be romantically, whether that be employees, whether that be people that were around him. And there is this pattern that has developed where he treats women a certain way, according to these individuals. One of those ways, you know, one of the exes that I talked to that 
basically he tied his finances to her for some eBay scams and left her on the hook, according to her. There are definitely some patterns that start to develop. There, there is also this new person, uh, apparently, who helped fund the 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 starting of his new shop once Haywood Comics became Morgan's Comics, which Morgan was an, a female employee of his, a manager who then was able to take over the original location and run that shop. And then apparently, from what I've heard, he felt hellbent, essentially, on opening a store to compete with her and found somebody, a, a woman in his life that was willing to finance the shop. Uh, from what I've heard, he was close to bankruptcy at the time. And that's why he needed the money to, for from somebody else to start up a new shop. But there is this like constant, you know, uh, attaching to women, using their finances, pattern from what these people report. And then also there are multiple people I've talked to with, you know, things like uh, what this, this ex-employee reported. I'm not going to share their stories because I haven't necessarily been cleared to do so. And so I feel like it's inappropriate to talk about what they allege. But I can say safely there are other people saying very similar things. So why am I making this video? Why I follow up? Well, first of all, again, like I said, a lot of you have asked for follow ups on this. Secondly, I'm really hoping that especially since CGC is still a major player in all of this, that some of this gets through to them and they find out about it and decide to act appropriately to take care of these customers that were affected by this person and everything that's been alleged against them. It's pretty crushing to be reached out to still by people that are like, you know, hey, where's my claim form or can you help me? and to be powerless to help them. So I'm genuinely doing everything in my power to help them and hopefully making another video like this might help. I do think this will be my last video on the topic unless there is some major news comes out, you know, some kind of another verdict and even that I might just talk about it on a live stream. I really hate having to cover a topic this much and I don't want to drum it up unnecessarily, uh, but I do want to respect the wishes of people that are, you know, hey, we still want to know what's going on. There are clearly some updates we had to go over in this story as well. I appreciate you watching this video and hopefully next time we'll have better news to report. But for now, I do want to thank my channel members who have helped support this channel. Their names are going to scroll by on the screen right now and I really appreciate everything they do in helping me run this channel. If you're interested in becoming a member, there is a join button down below. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching, helping get you know the word out about this situation and hopefully we can help kind of affect some change here with organizations that are still in a position to do so like CGC. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I just want to remind you, as always, Hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.